All right, let's go to crude oil. So what we want to do, there's only two ways to trade the markets. Okay? And this is how you got to approach it. Every day, I don't care what market you trade. You trade currencies, you trade futures, you trade stocks, you trade ETFs, you trade options, OEX options. It doesn't really matter. There's only two types of market. The market's not very hard to understand. We're in a trend, trend market and we're in a chop market. All right, trend market versus chop market. That's all we need to understand. So you got to ask yourself, every day you log in, the first thing you ask yourself, you don't care where the market profile levels are. You don't care where my supply demand levels are. You sure as heck don't care where this oscillator is at in the bottom. You don't care where the moving averages, I mean, uh, you don't care where anything else is, but what you want to do is look at the moving averages and then look at my trend box because they're going to tell you the overall trend of the market. Either we're chop or we are trending. So let's go look at this methodology and then we'll go into today's trading. The moving averages are right here. I got three of them on here for you and they're not, it doesn't matter really the length of the moving average. As traders get caught up on the length of moving average. I mean, on daily charts, I like, look, I like looking at the 10-day moving average, the 21, the 50, the 100, 150, and 200. I mean, that's why I'm daily. Because when they break above, like the S&P did on crude oil, you can see if you're in a hard downtrend, uptrend. If you're in a hard uptrend on any stock or any futures or anything, typically you retest to the 21 or 20 and you take back off on a daily chart. So daily moving averages are great for support and resistance on breakouts, but they're not very good intraday. So what you can use them though is for trend direction on intraday. So I got three of them on here and you have a longer term, intermediate, and a smaller term. If, if all three are below each other and they're cranking down, the trend's down. So and if the trend box is red, the trend's down. So th those are my two, two check, check marks. If moving averages are down, trend box is red, we're in a downtrend. If trend box is green, moving averages are up, we're in an uptrend. That's a trend market to me. Trend is also the angle of the moving average. If we're flat sideways, if it's going horizontal, you're in a chop market. If you're angled down, you're in a trend market. And that's all you got to do. Let the system do the work other than that. So once you find out you're in trend, we want to trade off these supply demand lines. And how you want to do it is, is you want to look for the speed bars to come through. A speed bar is categorized as a two candles or less in a closed trend box. So if I look here, it shows you there's major possible selling in the market and they're trying to really mark the market lower. Remember, these are electronically traded markets. They'd leave their footprint. So if you see a speed bar, get ready for some action because the market should start moving. So the speed bars are right here, two candle close inside of a closed trend box, two candle close. We broke through the trend, uh, through the demand line. Then look for retracement. Now, once it closes a green candle close, on this retracement, I do not want to close above a whole body candle close above here. Do not want to close a whole body candle close above because if I do, it nullifies this entry. But it does not. The wicks can break. The wicks, bro wicks broke. We had a negative market delta there, and we cranked down. Then we got the speed bars that came through here again, came through the demand line. Remember, old support becomes new resistance. Old Demand becomes new supply. So this is a demand line. And I want to see rejected areas. So this is a great trade for me because I love rejected areas when it goes against trend. The trend is up and this gets rejected. And this is one of my favorite setups that I've always looked at and I always will because rejected levels against trend tells me I'm going to catch counter trend traders right at this level. And if you catch counter trend traders at this level, it's going to benefit your runners that you get when you get into this market. So you come down, you want to see it bounce. It bounces up. Market trend is down. I bounce, come down, I bounce off demand line. Bounce. But I'm going against trend. Moving averages are down. Bounce. Now I want to see a breakthrough of my demand line. Once I get a breakthrough, I got speed. I want to see speed bars come in. There's speed bars. Then you want to see retracement. It's got to come within a couple ticks of my demand line. It cannot close before you get pulled in the market above this demand line. You get too many good trades that happen where you don't need to close above it. So when we're looking for crude oil inventories today, I want to see this. I want to see speed through these demand lines or market profile. I want to rotate back up, and I want to not close above 
I don't want to close above my supply line now. So I don't, I get a full retracement down here, and there you go. So that's how you trade trend markets. Now, if you trade trend markets, what you want to do is get all over supply and demand lines. Trade supply demand. That's these lines I just put up. Trade supply and demand. If the market you log in and we are sideways flat, we had that yesterday on the S&P, had some good trades. You do not want to trade supply demand so much because you're not going to be breaking and retesting the trend. What you want to do is you want to buy and sell market profile, the outer edges. That's how you trade between trading a chop and a trend market. Trend markets are simple. We're trending hard down. You're going to get it probably in crude oil today with inventories coming out. You're going to see a break with trend down hard through a demand or supply line, retest it, and just go. All right? Chop market, here's what we're going to do. In chop markets, what we're going to do is we're going to sell the low high and buy the low. So if we are, there, there's only two things on market profile you really, really need to be, um, you really need to concentrate on is there's a thick green line, thick red line, I'm sorry. That's all the volume that's coming in the market from all the algorithms, institutional traders, banks, hedge funds. They're leaving their footprint. Right there is major resistance. Down here, that's called HVA, high value area. All right, so this is HVA, high value area. If the market's flat, you want to sell high value on the first and second test. Or if it's in a downtrend, you want to sell HVA. If it's in an uptrend, you want to buy LVM market profile. So that's HVA. Okay? So you see the market was in a downtrend here this morning, and once you come with it, this is the same that applies to, to market profile. You, you come up. You come with a couple ticks of it, can break the wicks. That's a sell. That's a sell. Here's the demand line. So in a flat market, if the moving average are flat, you want to buy the low, sell the high. Buy the low, sell the high. Okay? This is LVA down here, low value area. This has been working since 1985. The beautiful thing about this market profile that we use, it's a longer-term profile. It's not a 30-minute, so you get really good support and resistance levels so that the HVA is high value area red LVA is green low value area now the other the, the big thick green and red line you want to trade off those levels because they're very important especially if they line up with the supply and demand line you have confluence but they're tradable by themselves but the great thing about these levels also is I know future pivot levels are trade off of so I know it got rejected here to sell. So I know they left their footprint there and there. So now I can go over here to know that if I would have got a pull-in bar here, then that would have been a tradable setup because it broke out of a pivot level that got rejected. It retested, but look, it never closed a whole body. It closed a whole body candle closed below. So what's that tell you? That means the market is not strong. It's oscillating. Because if it was strong, that's a great pivot level to trade off of right there. Vice versa down here, LVA. Bounce, bounce. If the market was weak, you would have broke. It did. Close below it. It retested. Did we get a body candle close red bar right here? Nope. Came back inside it. Closed the whole body candle close. No trade. Broke again. Came back inside. Closed the whole body candle close. Nullifies a weak market, breaks down, closes back inside, nullifies a weak, weak market. So market profile really leaves a footprint. I mean, they'll tell you flat out if we need to be a net buyer, net seller on breakouts or what have you. If I look at the S and P, if if I look at back the S and P, this is 
this is what a big level for me yesterday. This is where I shorted yesterday. I was in the room, and I shorted live here in the room. Um, my live fill was 03 and three quarters at this level. Right at that level. Why? Because see how flat the moving averages were? See how flat they are? Flat, sideways. They're not trending. So what I tell you, the only two things to do is a trend and chop. And this has been working since 1985, 35 years. 35 years of data. That was dual market profile. So what it come down to? Look at the dual market profile. But see, what it did is it told me these are good pivot levels to trade off of. So I knew yesterday, because this was actually the 200-day moving average on the five-minute chart. Remember that, Sal, yesterday, 200-day moving average on the five-minute chart, and this was dual market profile. So if this would have broke, man, that's a hell of a pivot level to trade off of also. So that's how you can trade a market profile. Not only it tells you to sell the high by low in flat markets, right? It tells you where future pivot levels are to trade off of. So if I break out and I retest, those are great market profile levels to trade off of. Okay? So that's what we want to do. We want to trade, we want to trade, break retest trades on market profile and supply demand lines with trend. If not, market's flat, sell the high by the low.